but if I'm actually like creating something, like creating a lecture, I probably wouldn't do it on here. A lot of good games. I just got a uh, a new phone yesterday too, so I've been playing with that too. I got the the Droid X2. Yeah. Uh, so far. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I definitely had that problem with my droid Eris. Like, I would listen to a music service in my house. You know, I'll start up my car, fire up the phone. It's still getting my wireless network. I pull down the driveway. It's out of range, and it doesn't know what to do. This one seemed to handle it better. It, it, it didn't have a hitch this morning when it tried it. So it could have just been a fluke or, or, or what, but. Uh -huh. The first one was the battery fault. Oh, okay. And I don't know why I was right. seeing that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. All right. On this one, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hard, hard to say. Right, right. Yeah, the, the, the X2 does too, yeah. It, 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 yeah, I mean, the performance wise is good. Although I swear you can watch the battery drain. You know, <laughs> if you're doing anything, you can like, you see it, you know, so. But yeah, you know, yesterday was was a new toy, so I was playing with it a lot, so that's, that's probably why. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious on a normal day's use how it will, how it will behave. Really? Okay. Oh. All right. What was that? The oh. Unlocking it probably because Bryce had a slope Yeah, I I did notice that. Yeah. I mean, it's just brute. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Right. All right. <coughs> Oh, hi, this is Mike. I'm ready to start. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right. Our goals today are as follows. Um, at least I want to do this, and if we do more, then good for us. All right. I want to review what we've discussed last time a bit, spend a few minutes reviewing that. I want to talk about the basic, some basic tags that we skipped last time. I want to talk about the link tag because you need to do links for your assignment. And if we have time, we'll talk about changing the appearance of your page. All right. Um, <clears throat> one thing, I don't recall how much I talked about it last time or if I emphasized it or what, but one thing that is um, part of the appeal to web development for me is it really involves bringing together two sort of different skills. And, and I, I talk about this in my multimedia class as well. To be successful as a web developer, you need both sort of a, a, a sense of being able to design something that is usable and works well and works very usable uh, without you know difficulties and you need the technical skills to be able to go ahead and implement it. Uh, if either of those two things fail your, your project isn't going to be successful. You know, We've all been on websites that might look good but if you can't find the information that you're looking for then the site as a whole isn't successful. And 
I, I suppose the reverse is true too. You might have a, a site that does have good content, but um, you know the, the appearance makes it hard to read or, or whatever. All right. Or there's technical issues like images don't appear or links are broken or that sort of thing. So what we want to do in this class, and we'll always come back to the, the balance between the two. And to start off, the focus is going to be on sort of the technical side because we want to get jumped in and rolling on that. And then we'll start uh, getting into more of the design um, aspects of it a as it goes on. Anyhow, um, <clears throat> let's look at the example that we did last time. All right, we had a web page, and, and I really just used uh, a couple different tags. I used some heading tags, and I used a paragraph tag. If you remember what a tag is, is a tag is an indication to the browser to treat some text a certain way. All right, so for example, about me was in an H1 tag, and therefore it is you know, considered to be a top-level heading. Then I have some H2 tags, H3 tags, and I have a plain paragraph. Let's go and look at the source code behind this. I'm, I'm viewing it in the browser. And again, the way you view an HTML file in the browser is by just double-clicking it. If I want to edit it to make changes to it, um, I need to pull it up in a text editor. And for this class, I use Notepad. And you can get to it in several different ways. You can just open up Notepad if you want. Go to File open, be sure to change that to all files, and then you can go and open it up that way and you can see it. Now, again, the tags to review, um, the tags come in pairs. There's a starting tag and there's an ending tag. For, and, and every tag should have a, a pair, a, a starting and an ending. And they go around the text that you want to mark up, the text that you want to identify as being having some special meaning. So for example, this H1 tag starts here and ends there. So everything between it is considered to be the top level heading. Everything between the P tags is the paragraph uh, in question here. Likewise with the H2, H2, H3, and so on down the line. Uh, a couple things about the way your page looks uh, in the text editor. All right. Um, first of all, it doesn't matter how much white space you have uh, in your text editor. The, the browser will sort of smash everything together and just put a single space, you know. And for example, I could do this, and that's not going to move any of the things around on the page when I view them in the browser. All right. Oftentimes what people do is people will indent, and that doesn't have an effect either. All right. So if I indent this, and then view it in the browser, it makes no difference. Likewise, if I put extra lines here, it doesn't make any difference. This is a mode I usually work in when I'm working on a web project, is I'll have my file open in an editor, and I'll have it open in the browser. Do keep in mind, this is, this is something that some students, uh, it takes a while for them to realize, but I want to be, be very clear in pointing out that there's only one file here. There's only one web page. There's one HTML document. We're simply looking at it two different ways. It's almost like you know, if someone were to take a photograph of your head, all right, or your face or your head, and then take an x-ray of it, right? You only have one head. <laughs> it's just two different views of it. One is the view that the outside world sees, and one sort of the inner workings of it, all right? So when we view the, the, the page in the browser, that's how the outside world's going to see it. When you, when you publish your page to the internet, that's what they're going to see. When we view it in the text editor, we're sort of x-raying in and getting to the nuts and bolts of the actual code that's there. All right. Uh, again, in Notepad, what you do when you save it is you need to go and save it as an HTML document. So choose all files and make sure it ends in .html. 
The one other thing I suggest that you do with your machine is show the extensions. Remember, we talked last time how a file name actually has two parts. It has the name and it has the extension. And the extension helps identify what kind of file it is. So these pages should end in a .html. Well, you need to see exactly what the file names and extensions are. So what I typically do is go to Windows, and again, depending on what particular version of Windows you're using, typically you'll find it under Folder Options View. I uncheck this box that says Hide Extensions for Known File Types. Because if that's clicked on, then I can't see that that's the, a .html file. Actually, it could be a .htm file. Those are web pages too. All right. So I will go and make sure that those extensions are visible and are not hidden. And here's my new phone starting. All right. <laughs> That's one reason, by the way, I think someone had it uh, last time. Uh, their, their phone went off in lab. That's one reason I don't give people grief in, uh, <laughs> about it, because it happens to me. I think what happened was buffering or something, and I was playing it in the car, and, and, or, or I leaned back against it and hit play or whatever. So, all right. Uh, my wife had an instructor that if, the, if someone's phone went off, they had a quiz. All right. If any person's phone came out, the whole class had a quiz. Um, so, you had that one? Yeah. Oh, you have it right now? Uh-oh. All right. So, so, since my phone went off, get out a sheet of paper. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what happens if the instructor's phone gets off. If they get extra credit or, or what? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that might be worth a shot, you know. See if you can find her cell number. Uh, him or her cell number. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to cover the, uh, the anonymity here. And, and try calling it off. See if it goes off. At any rate, um, oh, where were we? Um, yeah, the two different views of the page. Again, uh, the, 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 the .html uh, page you can view in Notepad or you can view in a browser. And again, I prefer not uh, to have the extensions hidden so I can see the exact file names. That will become important too when we talk about images. Because, for example, it's not obvious if, a file is a, if an image is a GIF file or a JPEG file. And in fact, a JPEG, JPEG file can actually have several different extensions. Some JPEG files are .jpeg, some are .jpg. So sometimes if, you don't, if you're not showing the extensions, you can get confused and your image won't show up properly. So uh, again, uh, that, that's my uh, word of advice. One thing, that we, um, one thing that we did last time in the interest of time is I skipped some tags that really are part of every single page. They're sort of the, the basic structure framework uh, of the page. Um, I just did that because I wanted to do something fairly quickly so that you could kind of get started on your assignment. The tags that I skipped are like this. At the, at the top of the, the page, there is an HTML tag. And at the end, there is an and HTML. There is also a head tag and a body tag. Most of the action goes on in the body tag. All right, so that's all the stuff that appears on the page is in the body tag. The head tag is sort of for information about the page. Initially, what we're going to be interested in putting in is a title for the page. So I'll put in a title tag, which is simply title. The HTML tag simply tells the browser, lets the browser know that it's dealing with an HTML document. Later on in the course, we will alter this HTML tag a little bit, and we'll put some additional information to like, let it know what version of HTML we're using. But for right now, it's enough to identify that we have, we're dealing with an HTML document here. Yes? But it really doesn't matter. Yeah, you really, you really don't matter. That, that's the interesting thing. 
Uh, HTML is unlike, um, say, true programming languages like Visual Basic. If, if you make a mistake in Visual Basic, your program just doesn't run, right? If, if you, you know, if, if you don't create a variable and you try to use it or whatever, it blows up. HTML, the browser, gives it its best shot at displaying the page. Now, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong, but it, it, it gives it the old try to, to try to display the page. Yeah, so the fact that these are missing didn't really affect the way the page was displayed. But there, there's other reasons, and again, we'll talk about them, uh, we'll talk some later on, that it is important to have these. Again, the head section has information about the page. In this case, it's the title. The body is everything that appears in the body or the, the main window of the web page. So let's look at this now. I'll save it and I'll view it in the browser. Notice that the title appears up here. So the title appears on the title bar. All right. And if I minimize this, I can see the title down there. I think I can. Yeah. <laughs> Web page example. All right. So that's where the title appears. A title is different than the H1. Remember the H1 is code that appears in the body of the web page. This area here is what I mean by the body of the web page. All right. So every web page will have these additional tags All right, uh, that we didn't talk about last time. So every web page will be basically structured like this. HTML tag at the start and end, head tag, body tag. Now, notice these tags are a little different than the tags we looked uh, at last time in that the end tag isn't like right after the start tag. If we look at the H1, notice the H1 is here, there's some text, and bam, there's the end H1. In this case, the body tag is here, there's a bunch of tags, and then bam, the end body here. That's what's known as nesting of tags. Think of, of tags as nesting like those Russian dolls that, you know, the little ones that stack inside each other look like eggs and get bigger, all right? For example, what this tells you, or, or more importantly, what this tells the browser is that everything between here and here is part of the body, all right? So it's part of the body. It, it shows sort of containment. Now, notice what I did with the code. I indented it so it's clear that everything between here and here is part of the body. You actually don't have to do that. Your, your HTML code actually could be all on one line with all the tags. What would the problem with that be? It's hard to read, and therefore it's hard to go back and change. So much of what we do in web development and software development in general is to make our lives easier when we go back later and, and make a change to it. All right? Um, we know that it's inevitable that at some point we're going to have to go back and change it, right? And therefore, we do what we can to make it easy so that when it's time to change it, it's, it's straightforward to do. So one of the things uh, that's important to do is to indent your code in a way that reflects the way that the tags are nested. Now, tags ought to be properly nested. So for example, This is not properly nested. Another way of saying nested is if a tag starts inside another tag, it needs to end inside that tag as well. So this H2 starts inside the body tag. Well, the ending H2 tag needs to be inside the body tag as well. So that is not acceptable. Now, what happens if you break one of those rules? Again, you don't know. It might work. You might not notice anything. In fact, let's try this. Yeah. It worked. All right. The problem is you can't count on it working. You can't count on it working between different versions of the browser, uh, between different browsers, Firefox and Internet Explorer different operating systems, and so on. So your best bet for getting a page that works across a bunch of platforms is to follow the rules of HTML. All right? HTML, again, 
It doesn't blow up with errors the way other programming languages do. It takes its shot. All right. It's actually pretty clever. Because let's say I put in a non-existent tag. It's not like it blows up, right? It doesn't know what to do with it. All right, it doesn't know what I, how I want to treat it, but it doesn't blow up. If you think about it, that allows them to introduce new features in HTML without messing up old web pages, right? They just, it just, essentially what it doesn't understand, it ignores, all right? Kind of like my cats, right? What they don't understand, they ignore, which is pretty much everything, all right. Okay. So, we'll see more and more examples of nesting. The key concept with nesting is that if a tag starts within a tag, it also needs to end within a tag. All right? And the indentation of it is, is, is not necessary, but it is important. All right? Again, I, I told one of my other classes, you know, if you look at me, you can tell I'm not really a neat person. You know, the way I write, you know, my handwriting, the way I dress, all those things. I'm not really a perfectionist and, and, and a neat neck. Yet, when you look at the code, I try to have that code indented perfectly because I know that that's important. So if I can take the time to be neat <laughs> with that, you ought to as well. All right? It really, really, really helps you come back later on and, and uh, find where problems are and, and make changes to it without messing things up. Okay. Questions about any of this so far? It doesn't matter how far you indent. Yeah, a couple spaces are good. You don't even, strictly speaking, have to indent, but again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's, yes, yeah, it's definitely a good idea. It doesn't matter how much you indent or if you indent. But it is a good idea to use that. I usually just tab over unless it gets really deeply indented, and then I might just use a space or two to indent. Yes? Uh huh? Correct. So, yeah, whatever the paragraph is, you know. What great question. The question is what determines what, when it goes to the next line? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to. Let me go grab a big chunk of text. Um, web designers have a little tool that they use that's called Greek text. And it's not really Greek, but it's like fake text that you can, you can put into your code to just sort of uh, line things up and make sure everything's okay. Let's say if I was doing a, a web page about Lorraine Community College's engineering division. Now, I might not know all the details, and I might not know what they want to say about themselves, so I'll just put a block of dummy text in, all right? So that's what I'm going to do here so to avoid the painful experience of watching me try to type a long paragraph, all right? So I'm going to go and I'm going to cut this or copy this, and I'm going to paste it in this paragraph. And I'm going to turn off word wrap. I turned, it doesn't really matter, that's just how you're seeing it, all right? I'm just doing, I'm just turning it off to illustrate a purpose. That paragraph is all one gigantic line, all right? Boom, all the way to the end. Now watch how the browser displays it. File save. What's it do? Well, it doesn't write it as one line. It, the browser is smart enough to sort of wrap the paragraph into the available space. Now, one thing that we'll spend a lot of time on right around the middle of the semester is how to get the exact layout that we want. But the nice thing is, is the browser does a lot of neat things so that you don't have to worry about every single detail of the layout.
Yeah. You guys are gonna you guys are gonna get an A before uh before it even started. Let me turn the volume on so if that does happen again or off, so if it does happen again. Yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna silent the whole thing. Okay. Pardon me? Yes. Yes, exactly. Along with, yeah, along with all that. Okay. I have an excuse because it's a new phone, so hopefully next week it won't happen. All right. At any rate, notice what it did. It wrapped the paragraph to fit the window. And in fact, notice how we make the window smaller, it changes the wrapping of it to fit the available space. So the browser is pretty clever. And that's why really the white space doesn't matter to the browser, all right? Because it has its own rules for positioning things. So the question was, how does it know when to put a new line? It's at the end of the paragraph tag. The end of the paragraph tag, that's what indicates it's a paragraph. So it doesn't matter. I can go in here and chop this up any way I want. If I want to make my code more readable. So I can put carriage returns in there wherever I want. Browser doesn't care. Browser just displays it according to its rules. That does bring up a good point. The tags that, are, that, that create a new line are called uh, block tags. We'll talk about block tags and inline tags. All the tags that we've seen so far are block tags. In other words, if I have an H1 and underneath it I have another H1, those two are on different lines. We'll look at another tag in a couple minutes here that will be different than that. Pardon? No. Um, what I mean is notice that I have uh, uh, an H1 and a paragraph. Given that those are both block tags, the H1 is on one line and the paragraph doesn't start alongside of that, but it starts on a line below it. So all the tags we have start on their own line, so all the tags that we've looked at so far are block tags. The n very next tag that we're going to look at um, will, um, will, will be an example of an inline tag. Questions? Why do web developers do that? Because they want to get, they, they want to work on the appearance of the page before the content is ready. All right? So again, Let's say I was doing a page and, uh, again, about the engineering division and the, the, the site was going to have uh, biographies of the professors. And each professor is going to email me with their biography. Well, I might, start want to work, I might want to start working on it before they've emailed that to me. And I want to get everything lined up and make sure the font's the right size and the, the biography's in the right position and all that. So. I'd go and maybe cut out a couple paragraphs of that Greek text, paste it in, and then I could line it up, and then when they got the real text, uh, I could then substitute that. Uh, some designers don't like to use uh, Greek text because they say, you know, it confuses people that you're showing it to, and, and, uh, and it, uh, you know, um, you really should use the actual words, you know, uh, to see because, you know, if it's not the actual words, you're not really reading at it. You're just sort of glancing at it. A lot of, lot of uh, differences. But I use it sort of a shortcut in this class because I, you know, if I want to show how a big paragraph is going to look, I don't want to spend the time to type it out. So I just copy and paste. All right. Other questions? All right. You go ahead. Yes. Uh, we'll talk more about alignment and that sort of thing. Keep in mind that, that the appearance of your page is determined by two things. One is the default behavior of the tags in the browsers, and the other is the cascading style sheet code that you put in. All right. Uh, by default, block tags are 100% of the width of the page. A paragraph is 100% width of the page. 
You know, a div is 100% the width of the page. So yeah, it will go all the way across and, and so on. Now, through cascading style sheets, which we'll either talk about, we'll either start talking about today or uh, if not, then on Tuesday, with cascading style sheets, you can change the default. All right? You can change the default, any aspect of the default appearance. For example, the background color of this page by default is white. I could change it to be something else through CSS. The default behavior of paragraphs is to go all the way across the screen. I could change it to limit that and, and not go all the way across the screen. But that, that's, again, getting a little, a little ahead of ourselves. We'll, we'll come to that pretty quickly. All right, the link tag. All right. You need the link tag for your first assignment. All right, that's sort of the last tag that you need for the first assignment. Uh, everything else we should have covered. And the link tag works like this. Before I talk about the link tag, imagine this. Imagine that one of you students, your car broke down. All right? And you came up to me and says, look, can I have a ride home? I say, sure. Meet me at my car. All right? What are you likely to say? Where's your car? Which one is your car? Go out there. There are... 50,000 cars in a parking lot over there. I, I think I would have been better off just to stay in my driveway and walk here as compared to where I parked in the parking lot, right? All right. There's a lot of cars out there. So for me to say, meet me at my car, doesn't mean anything. You have to say, well, what's car? And I could describe it to you. I could give you the license plate number or I could describe how it looks or what bumper stickers are on it or whatever. All right. Now think about creating a link to a web page. Can I simply say, I want to create a link to a web page? No. Why not? Which of the 50 billion web pages do you want to link to? Do you want to link to LC's web page? Do you want to link to Google? Do you want to link to Yahoo? You know, who knows? So when you, when, when you use a link tag, in addition to saying it's a link tag, you have to supply additional information. So in addition to me saying, meet me at my car, I have to supply additional information. And by the way, my car is this. So when you create a link tag, in addition to saying, I want a link tag, you have to say, and oh yeah, the page I want to link to is this. All right? Additional information about a tag is called an attribute. All right? This is the first tag that we're going to see that has an attribute. All right, all these other tags are just in themselves, you know, enough, at least for right now. A link tag looks like this. Starts with an A. A stands for anchor, by the way. And then to link to another page, you use the href attribute. So if I wanted to link to Google, for example, the tag would look like this. All right. Let's break it down to its pieces. The A indicates that this is a link tag. A actually stands for anchor, which is, you know, not what typically people call them, but it is for a link. Notice that we don't have the greater than sign right here like we do with most of the other tags. Part of the start tag, the, the whole start tag goes from here to here. Part of that start tag is an href attribute, all right? All attributes work this way. You have the name of the attribute equals, and then you have a value. All right? So I have a link. What page is it a link to? href equals, and then within the quotes, I have the URL of the web page. All right? Then I end the starting tag. 
Between the starting tag and the ending tag, I have the text that I want the user to click on to get to that link. You know, you have to have something for the user to click on to, 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 to be that. And the, and the text should be descriptive. The text shouldn't be something like click here. All right? We'll talk about reasons for that, but it's important to have those links be descriptive. For example, for your first assignment, I wouldn't do something like resource one, resource two. I might say Wikipedia article about HTML. Um, you know, um, Joe Smith web development company dot com page about HTML. Something like that. Give a more descriptive. So let's go and insert a link in here. And I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to put it inside the paragraph. Thank you. You're on the ball. A href equals HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com my link to Google and then I'll close that. So that's the same as what I had on, on the page. I have the A tag. I don't finish the start tag. I instead put the href attribute which is the word href equals, then I have enclosed in double quotes the name of the page I want to link to, then I finish the start tag, then I put the text that I want the user to click on, and then I put the end tag. All right. So, let's save this. Yeah, href refers to typically there's actually a couple possibilities for href, but one of the main possibilities is it could be linking to uh, an external web page, a web page on another server. Right. <coughs> Let's go and save that and click refresh. Notice that it's my link to Google. It looks different. It looks like a link, right, given it is a different color and it's underlined. And if I click on it, I'm taken to Google. All right. Now, notice that even though these are on separate lines, <coughs> it appears right next to that other text. Why? Because links are inline tags. All right. Remember, block tags create a new line. Inline tags don't create a new line. So inline tags um, are going to appear right up against the other text. Or, you, you know, or, or to show another example, I could put this in the middle of my Greek text like that. And then the link appears right there. I can click on it and go to it. Yes, I put that in the paragraph. So again, that's a case of nesting, right? I have my paragraph, my start paragraph my end paragraph, my link starts within the paragraphs and then it ends, ends within the paragraph. There's a lot of things we could do. You know, you, you have a lot of flexibility to do whatever you want. Again, you know, HTML really, there's a certain number of tags, but the way that you combine them, especially when we start adding on the layer of cascading style sheets, um, there's really a lot of flexibility in what we can do. Question? Yeah, well, let's, let's see. Good question. If I put this here, what's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? We have a couple choices. Well, let's look and see what it does and, and identify it. All right. About me, because about me is a block tag, when it ends, it goes to a new line. All right. My link to Google then appears. And then, because the paragraph tag is a block tag, it starts on a new line as well.
Like more text? Yeah. Because yeah. it's not a block tag. Um, yeah, in a, yeah, in a nutshell, yeah. Um, I, that, that's a great question. I don't know if there's literally a new line before and after or if that's handled a, a, another way. Uh, but yeah, essentially, um, uh, it's going to make sure that there's a, you know, that that starts on a new line. Uh, that, that, that when a block tag ends, the next thing starts on a new line. When a block tag begins, it starts on a new line. Other questions? Yep. Same way. Yeah, so I could, I could go and do this. And I could have my paragraph down here and have the link down below the paragraph and it would work that way. Um, I don't know what exactly controls the size of the spacing. Um, through CSS we can customize that though. That, that is a browser default. I don't know if there's actually two new lines because it's likely to be slow. It could potentially be slightly different per browser, because it looks like there's the same space between this and this as there is between this and this. That's just a default thing. Yeah, through CSS, we'll be able to change any of that. Other questions. We have about ten minutes. I'm going to introduce you to the next language that we're going to study. All right. Best practices for web development, and by best practices I mean the practices that are going to lead to the most maintainable code, all right, involve us using two languages to create a web page. All right. And we'll talk about the whys. I don't, I don't think, it, I, you know, I think it's important for you to understand why you're doing something and not just repeat it just because I said so. All right. That, by the way, if any of my kids are listening, that doesn't apply to you. All right. You need to do things just because I said so. But for my, for my students, all right, it's important that you understand why I say these things. All right. The reason that we use two languages is by keeping them separate, we can easily change one without changing the other. All right? And we'll see how we can put aspects of the appearance into another file using a language called CSS or Cascading Style Sheets, and we can change our entire site's color scheme or fonts or anything like that simply by changing one of the one file. So we don't have to go back to every file and change the color. We can make the change in one file, and all hundred pages can be changed as a result of that. We're going to get to that point fairly quickly, but I do want to introduce cascading style sheets and the language of CSS for you. Now here's the idea. All right, the content of your page should be in HTML. So your images, your text, your links, all that stuff is done in HTML. Anything that deals with the way it looks, though, should be handled through CSS. All right? Now, some of you that maybe did web development in the past might know of things such as font tags or putting a background color on the body or that sort of thing. We're not going to do that. We're not going to use anything in HTML, tags or attributes, to change the appearance. Anything with the appearance we're going to handle via CSS. And again, the flexibility and the power that it gives you really is, is a big deal. All right. So what does CSS look like? We're going to start with a real simple example, and we'll go from there. Here's another thing that goes in the head, a style tag. All right. The style tag tells the browser you're no longer in HTML land. You're in CSS land. Okay? 
So what's between the start and end style tag isn't going to be in the language of HTML. It's going to be in the language of CSS. Now, we're going to start with probably like the simplest CSS that you can do. And then we'll build up to doing really involved things with that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the default colors. Remember what I said before. The way your page looks is a combination of your style rules and the CSS and the defaults. For this particular browser, the default is set up to be white background and black text, all right, which is probably pretty standard. I'm going to make it different colors. And I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say background yellow color blue. Do keep in mind when I choose colors, I want colors that contrast a lot and stand out. I'm not saying these are the best choices for colors for a web page. We'll talk about choosing colors later on. All right. Um, I, I also, if you know, if anyone had anyone either in class or online is colorblind, let me know, and I'll do my best to. Um, Use examples. You are? W would you be able to distinguish uh, yellow and blue? Yeah. Okay. All right. There's different kinds of color blindness and all that. Red, green? Okay. All right. So let's look at this. All right. There we go. Now, let's go and analyze what we did. Let's go and break down what we did. First of all, we have a style tag in the head section that tells the browser, hey, the code in between the start and end style tag isn't HTML but CSS. We then have the word body. All right? The body is what is called a selector. All right? Each one of these lines in a CSS file, you could call a style rule. All right? And there's a selector, and then there's attributes. The selector says, what gets this rule? The attributes say, well, what about are we going to change? What is it that we're going to change? So the way to read this is the body is a selector. That means that this style rule covers everything in the body tag. Well, what's everything in the body tag? Well, it's the whole web page. All right? So the whole web page then becomes yellow and a background color of yellow and the text color of blue. All right. So background is what you can use for the background color. Color is what you can use for the color of the text. There's a semicolon between them. And again, the way these read is that there is a brace or a curly bracket, sometimes I call it. You have an attribute that you want to change, a colon, a value, semicolon, next one, colon, and blue. Let's say I want to change it so that the H1 tags are, have a blue background with yellow writing. I want to do just the opposite for an H1 tag. How do you suppose I would do that? Yeah, how would I switch the color? Well, if I switched it around here, it would do it for the whole page. Let's say I want to do it just for the H1. Right. I would, I think, I heard a couple people at the same time, I think you were all saying the right thing. I would essentially change, add a new style rule that would say, I don't remember if I said H1 or H2, we'll do H1s now. And then I switch the colors around. So look what this says. Let's make sure this works, and then we'll go back and review it. And sure enough, the H1 is, is different. Now, look what this says. Again, remember the theme of selector and then attributes. Everything on this page gets a background color of yellow and a color of blue. So the whole body gets a background color of yellow and text color of blue. Just the H1s, though, 
get a different rule. So just the H1s get a background color of blue and a text color of yellow. Yes? Does it matter what order we put? Are no. The same if we put the H1 above the body? Yeah, that, that, that shouldn't matter. All right. It sort of cascades. In other words, if there's no style rule, for example, for H2, which there isn't, then H2 gets the same style as the rest of the body. But there is a different style rule for H1, so it gets its own rule. H1's part of the body, right. But you could, yeah, think of it that way. You're making exceptions. Another way to look at it is the more specific a rule applies, it takes precedence. In other words, the body is a whole body. The H1 is part of that. So the body part uh, is overruled by the H1 part because the H1 is more specific. Yes? The, yeah, th this is exactly what that tag is, right. That, that matches up with the body, that matches up with the H1. Um, there's a way to do it without tags, yeah. There, you, you, can, you can do it via uh, an HTML tags class or ID. That's where you can make up your own. For now, we're just doing it based on the HTML tags. Yes? Yeah, we'll, we'll get on that. Um, there's a couple ways to set colors. For now, I'm just taking the simple way, and I'm just using, you know, the common colors that, that you would see. Um, next time, we'll go over uh, a more detailed description of colors. Um, what, what he's referring to as a hexadecimal code is an alternate way of describing blue would be this. Pound sign, 0, 0, 0, 0, FF. All right. If we wanted a darker blue... Maybe this. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm doing the text. I want to do the background. I want to do this guy. That would be regular blue. So that doesn't change. If I go and do this AA, you'll notice that heading will be a little darker. Yeah. So you really have, wow, what would it be? It would be 16 to the 6th power uh, color options, whatever that turns out to be. Let me do the math. That's a big number, all right? Uh, and we'll explore that next time. And we'll also, we'll also use, uh, there is a nice resource in Angel that sort of helps you picking uh, colors that, that coordinate well together using the you know, rules of optics and color matching and all that sort of thing. So we'll talk about that next time. Um, you're not expected to use CSS on your first assignment, all right? So if you, you know, you don't worry about that, this is sort of getting into the uh, next material. Yes? What is our next assignment? Um, whatever the Dropbox says. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I, I teach a lot of classes, so, uh, you know, I can't possibly remember all of them. I, you know, I, I would refer to the Dropbox as well. It's Tuesday? It's Tuesday? Yeah. Is that midnight? Yeah, it's, it's not, not very picky on, on the time. Now, are we allowed to mess up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can always do more than, than is assigned, all right? So if you want to play with CSS, you know, have a blast. I'm not, I'm not going to hold you back, all right? Uh, but it's not a requirement. All right, yes? And does the style always go in the heading? Yes. Never Correct. It shouldn't. Uh, using style this way, it should always be in the head. There are some kind of subtle exceptions, but yeah, in general, your style sheet will always go all in the head. All right? Yes? This is kind of off topic. But all right. Yes. So, for example, if I wanted to display an H1, yes. I, I would do this. Pound sign. What's that? That's a less than. Less than. That's not a pound sign. That's an ampersand. <laughs> I'm stuck in my head these hex codes. 
And this, I think, would do it. Yeah, if you want to do that. What, what he's saying about is, is, let's say I was doing a page about H1, I could, about HTML. I could say H1 is the tag for a top level heading. All right. So for that, you need to do, yeah. Yeah, because if you if you if you if you just if you just put an H1 tag, it would make that an H1 then. Yeah. So if you want to display, that would be how you would display a less than or greater than sign in your text without confusing the browser into thinking it's a tag. No, 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 no. Yeah, you do, but you wouldn't necessarily have to do it this way. Yeah, you wouldn't have to do it that way. Correct. All right. Yes. Exactly. Uh, our next step after we learn uh, uh, CSS is to take the CSS file, take the CSS code and put it in a separate file. Then we can go and apply that same CSS file to multiple HTML files. That's what I was getting to. You could change the color in one place and 50 pages get affected. But we do it this way to start out just to, to introduce the topic. Uh, same idea. Same idea. You take common code, you group it somewhere so that you can reuse it over and over again. All right. Thank you. All right. No problem. Thank you.